It's time for Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group with financial advisors Kevin Corhorn, Mike Bernard, and Josh Gregory. Hello and welcome to another episode of Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group, where every week we're helping you take your next wise step in your financial life. My name is Mike Bernard. I am your host. I am also one of the certified financial planners on the show. With me, as always, in the KFG studios, my business partners and fellow certified financial planners, Kevin Corhorn and Josh Gregory. Yeah, it's hard to believe that we're nearing the end of the school year. And if you have the goal of helping pay for your kids or even your grandkids' education, it is imperative that you use wise financial planning to help you reach that goal. And today we're going to be sharing our favorite planning strategies for college planning, that and more coming up this hour. If you are a regular listener to the Wise Money Show and you listened last week, uh, we hit so much stuff, didn't get a chance to hit a question though. I expect we'll be able to do so today and get through several uh, that you may have sent in. But I'd encourage you, if you have a question, reach out. We'd love to help. We'd love to uh, address it on an upcoming program if it's a question for the show. You can reach us a few different ways. 574-222-2000. That's 574-222-2000. You can call or text online, wisemoneyradio.com, and then social media. Just search Wise Money Radio, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. Subscribe to it. There's lots of content that we push out to those mediums. So subscribe to it, follow it, all that sort of stuff, and you can leave questions there as well. Okay, there are six areas to your financial life. The Wise Money Show is a show about all six areas and how they need to be tied together in a synergistic way. All right? We've been talking about, for the past five weeks, this week six, talking about the most important planning concepts in each of those areas. The truth is, and if you've listened closely, you've noticed, you can't talk about one area without talking about the others. You can't make a decision in your financial life without knowing how it impacts the others, even even college. Even talking about college planning it, it impacts the other areas of your financial life. It does. Just take a 529 plan. How does that impact your estate plan? Yeah, differently than other stuff. So anyway, um, we are talking about today college planning. We'll talk about our most valuable, our favorite planning concepts there. But uh, before we do, how would we define college planning? It's fairly obvious, but, but how would you just set the table for what college planning is? Well, I think a big part of the planning process for college is to figure out what, who's on the hook for what. Mm. And it's it, one of the reasons why people choose to not plan is there are so many variables that it's tempting to say, well, there, there are so many possibilities that we couldn't even come up with a good plan, so we're not even going to start. Lots of latent perfectionism and saying, hey, if I can't do it right, I'm not going to do it at all. And I would encourage you to get over that hump and say, no, what would the what are the possible scenarios? What if what if we go to uh, our child goes to IUSB? What if they go to IU? What if they go to Notre Dame? And looking at a kind of a, a variety of costs and based on those costs, who would pay for what? Are the grandparents going to chip in anything? Do the parents pay anything? What do the kids pay? And I think it's especially important for the kids to know what their expected contribution is. Because when you look at the FAFSA, it says the, the expected family contribution. But I, I think a, a, a big part of this process is what is what are the expected contributions for the other involved parties? Yeah, uh, absolutely. And inherent in this whole question, this this goal of helping your kids or grandkids with college, it's it's really a statement of what your values are in this area. You have certain beliefs. Maybe you've never articulated them. Maybe you haven't fully even uh, taken the time to understand what your spouse's uh, views on this are. But I, I guarantee you that there's some sort of variability. There's some sort of difference there. And uh, it's pretty rare for people to have exactly the same beliefs on whose role it is to pay for college. Anytime you start using the word should or ought or um, you know need, those are statements about values and beliefs. And you need to determine, well, do you believe that it's a parent's job to pay for their kid's college education? Do you even believe that a college education is necessary yeah. or important? Right. Uh, s- some people are starting to, to kind of challenge that assumption as well. But uh, 
taking the time initially to first of all just decide together if you're married what is our role going to be in helping to fund this? How are we going to launch our kids from the nest so that they can be productive members of society and they can be independent from you someday? College is often one of the paths that people take to get to independence, but it's not the only one. And you have to decide, is it the right one for you and your student? W- very well said, both of you. You know, I, I, again, as the nerd, I think college planning, you got to do certain calculations and so on. No, but it starts with um, having a discussion in deciding together who's going to play what role. And if you've listened to other shows where we've talked about our college uh, planning process that we help people through, that's the very first thing is clarifying who's going to play what role. An interesting observation, or at least it's interesting to me, is that most of the time those decisions as far as who's going to play what role is based on, well, what would you guys say It's but that's based on? Their own past experience? The, yes, totally. Exactly. So they either want to repeat their experience or they want to do the opposite of their experience. Mm-hmm. The point is, though, get it out in the open and, yes. and talk about it because there's, there's one avenue of uh, no, you got to work hard for things in life. That's a value. That's a principle. So we're not going to help our uh, pay for college. But you could also s- use those same reasons to say y- you've got to have responsibility, work hard. That's why we're having our kid go to school, and we don't want them to have debt. And so they're gonna we're gonna pay for it. So just get that stuff out on the mm-hmm. table. And it's and it's most interesting when you have a couple, and one of them says, "I paid my own way through college." I worked in the cafeteria while I was in college. I, I worked, you know, 30 hours a week and go, went to school full time and came out with no debt. And the other spouse says, my parents paid for everything so that I could have a college experience and, and, and et cetera, et cetera. So you, you take these two polar opposites and now they have to come up with a plan, a consensus for their children. Yeah, I mean, you're essentially comparing three different families' financial positions, Ooh. too, because his parents had a certain financial reality, and that allowed them to either help or not help or, or whatever. Her family had a certain financial reality, and that determined their ability to participate. And you have a totally different reality. I, I It is interesting to me how so important this is to some people because – Mom and dad, you know, education was so important. They paid my whole way. And so I'm going to do that for my kids. And I, I, I want to gently point out that, boy, your parents were gazillionaires. They could handle the cost in a different era. And you don't have the same resources as them. So don't be bound by the decisions that your parents made. You need to choose what's right in your financial life and what's right for your kids. But it does get interesting because... If I'm if I'm the guy, you know, that pulled myself up by my bootstraps and paid for my own education and my wife says, hey, we should really pay for all of our kids education, plus give them a nice little stipend so that they can um, have money for soda and snacks. And you say, well, wait a minute. Am I willing to sacrifice so that my kids have no sacrifice? And so this is where it can there can be a, a pretty decent rub because because if you're not on the same page, it can it can be a little bit of a challenge because some folks say, no, they shouldn't be expected to contribute anything. Um, and so you have to figure that out. I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of you um, new parents out there <laughs> hearing this dialogue with your eyes bugging out thinking, I, we're trying to figure out what size diapers to buy and how am I supposed to figure this out before I start saving? Because as we've said before, one of the, um, you're, you're most motivated to save for that child's education when they're first born. So, so get started. Well, you don't need to have all these answers figured out before you should get started. You do need to have some dialogue about whether it makes sense and, and who's going to play what role. But I'd encourage you, even when that stuff is not crystal clear, 
to get started. Yeah, don't wait until your kids are teenagers to start having these dialogues and and figuring this the out. The college goal is such a unique and challenging financial goal. It's it takes a long time, but you don't have, but it's finite, and then it, you spend the money very very quickly. So <laughs> um, we're going to talk about the most valuable planning concepts as well as some mistakes that you need to avoid if you have a goal of helping your child or grandchildren with college. That and more coming up here on Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group. Something that's interesting. So my dad, when Joshua was born, started putting 50 bucks a month into an American Funds 529 plan. Hmm. And he's, he's done that for 18 years. Wow, nice. Yeah. What do you think it's worth? 50 bucks a month, so 600 a year, so... Mm, 30 I was going to say 20. 18. That's 18 mm-hmm. grand he wouldn't have had, right? Well, 18 grand that n- no one was really planning on. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And we just we just moved it and from jo- from Joshua to Caleb, so it stopped the contribution. Contribution. I don't know. <laughs> That's fabulous. So I just called my dad and I said, hey, Dad. You are awesome. Um, we're fine for education. If you want to start this, hopefully Kim's not listening. Do it. Do it for. Do it for Kim's kids. Uh, and so he said, "Okay, let's start it and do it for Kim's kids." Uh, so it's kind. It cool. is, but it is the the power of just slowly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey, All you- right. Think about the ups and downs of the market over 18 years. Well, and especially the last 18. Right. Yeah. Shoe baby. If helping your child or grandchild with college, if that's a value, if that's important to you, if that's a goal financially in your life, are you on the same page with your spouse or whoever else, whatever other stakeholders? Are you on the same page with the student, the child, with how you're going to plan for that, what their role is? That's really the first step. And we're talking about that today. We're talking about college planning. Thanks for being with us. This is Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group. My name is Mike Bernard. Here with me in the KFG studios, Josh Gregory, Kevin Corhorn. Thank you to the attorneys at Ledoux, Curran, and Keen for making the Wise Money Show possible, as well as First State Bank. Thank you very much. If you have a question, reach out to us. You can call or text 574-222-2000. That's 574-222-2000. You can email us your question. Just go to wisemoneyradio.com and submit your question right there on the right. And then lastly, you can submit questions on our uh, social media pages, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. Uh, Every episode on the YouTube channel. We've got that and other content on the Facebook page and Twitter and so on. So you can submit your question right there and catch other content from Wise Money Radio right there as well. We are in our series about the most valuable planning concept in each of the six areas, um, we're doing a six plus one. So in the fifth area of your financial life, retirement planning, very similar process when it comes to college planning. Now, not everyone has a goal of of uh, sending a child to college and maybe not having a child at all means, yep, this is not a goal for me. That's why it's not its own separate area of your financial life. We tuck it in here to retirement planning because um, for most people it is, and it's a similar process. So what's the most valuable planning concept when you're trying to achieve the goal of helping someone with their college education? You know, I, I think my answer is different today than it, it would have been maybe a year or two ago. Um, I think it is more knowable or it, you can find it out earlier what the kind of cost you'd be looking at might be. And that's mostly because more and more schools are actually adding right there on their website. You know, I hopped on to Bethel College's website uh, two days away from being Bethel University. Um, Their website has a a tool on there called a, uh, I think they call it a net price calculator. And what it does is it takes some of the ambiguity out of the picture. It helps you start to narrow down Hey, I, I see what the sticker price is for this school, 
but I, I don't know what the actual cost would be. You know, after you start applying certain discounts and uh, scholarships and things like that. So they actually make it available to you if you have your FAFSA data on what your expected family contribution is and you have some of your W-2 income and SAT scores and things that you can get kind of an early indicator of what it might cost to go to that school. And a lot of schools do this. Mm. And back in the day, it was just a mystery until you applied and you went through the financial planning process and you waited to get some kind of an awards letter. And then you finally see, well, what what am I talking here? What What kind of cost is there? And so early on in the process, you have to define, well, what kind of cost are we looking at? And then deciding, as we said in the last segment, how much involvement are you willing to have in funding that cost? Mm -hmm. Because if if we're looking at 20 grand a year and you say, I'm willing to do whatever it takes to fund half of it, the, the wonderful thing that that does for you is it allows you to now have a target to shoot for, but it also defines for your kids what their responsibility is going to be so that they can enter into the planning process as well. Mm. Very, very helpful. And we have resources where we can look up the, the, the expected cost for pretty much every college out there. Um, but the net cost, the actual cost, is usually a little different. And so whether your child is or grandchild is hoping to go to University of Hawaii at Hilo or <laughs> Michigan State University, very similar schools, um, or, or Bethel University, you know, your certified financial planner can help you approximate what those costs are in, and help you at least be pointing at the right target. But as you get closer, yeah, jumping online and looking at resources like this to, so that you can really narrow in on what that cost is. There, there is this really weird, I don't know if you guys have seen this, sense of uh, relief when, a, when you're planning, when you're helping a family plan for college for all these years, and then the student finally says, I'm going here. Instead yeah. of this, oh my goodness, I can't believe it's going to cost that much. There's this relief like, okay, now I know. Okay, now I can work with that. Because mm -hmm. for 18 years, you've been planning towards this ambig amb ambiguous number that is either Notre Dame level or IUSB level or anything in between. And when you finally know, it's like, okay, I can work with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it is a little tricky if you be careful. I, I just uh, give you some advice from a guy who's been there, done that. Be careful what kind of promises you make your children. <laughs> be because... <laughs> Um, we had talked to our children about, hey, you're, you're going to be on the hook for half of whatever it costs, and but if, if, if you get some scholarships, we can offset that. And my son, Caleb, who's graduating this year, and uh, he's the guy you don't want to play Monopoly with because if you want to trade for a property, he will trade you for all your money and all your properties. <laughs> so he's, he's he, do not negotiate with Caleb. But he's said, Dad, based on the scholarships that I got to go, um, and he was considering Hillsdale, um, it looks like we would be, um, we could call it even if I just go to Hillsdale and take your truck. <laughs> 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 so um, he, he the oh, offset my. instead of money he just wants the truck. Yeah, I, I I I just don't see that working out for Caleb. But good luck, <laughs> good luck, buddy. I, I th this is um this is pretty basic. I'm assuming, but it was back in 2006. Kevin was asked to be a guest on a um on a on a TV show talking about finances and was talking about college planning in particular. And I remember he had a full day of appointments, and Josh and I at that stage, just, you know, what, 13 years ago, we didn't have as many appointments. And so he said, hey, can you guys make sure I've got some talking points and do some research and just help me, and, and then I'll fill in the rest. And Josh and I stumbled upon a, it was, do you remember? It was just, it was a claw. It was just a paragraph, like a FYI uh, that Indiana was going to start offering a tax credit if you contribute, if you pay Indiana state tax and you contribute to the right Indiana 529 plan. And it was just a game changer. I mean, it's a total God thing that we stumbled into that because no one was talking about it. No one knew about it. They hadn't, I don't even know when they passed it and how much time elapsed between when it's, they passed it and when we stumbled upon it. Yeah. I, I mean, that didn't go into effect until 2007, right? So exactly. it was like hot off the press. And so, so I, 
I would tell you, even though it's, it could be considered basic, the most valuable planning concept that I've seen is great utilization of the 529 plan. It applies to Michiganders too, or whatever state you live in, but certainly if your state offers a great tax incentive to do so like Indiana does, um, there might be tons of reasons, excuses to not use the 529 plan. What if my child doesn't go to school and um, there's a tax penalty if I don't use it for college or blah, blah, blah. blah. But um, financial success often comes after taking great advantage of tax shelters. That's exactly right. And one of the reasons that we do sing the praises of the Indiana 529 plan is that tax credit that can save you up to $1,000 on your tax return every year. However, the whole purpose of the 529 plan, the, the reason it's been around long before that credit existed is because it's a place for you to set aside money that can grow for the future without being taxed along the way. Investments grow faster when you don't have to pay tax on the growth every time you have a good year. Or every time, and this is very, very important with college, every time you say, oh, we need to reduce the risk, which is going to happen a ton, a ton, if you only have a decade or so to, to save up, and then the money's going to be gone in four years. Right? What a so fantastic you, point. Be, because if, if you've got to make changes to your risk tolerance, and I've got to sell this investment and move it into, every time if you're doing that in a taxable account, you've got to be aware of the tax consequences with it. But within a 529, as long as you don't do that too much, the IRS created some ridiculous rules about that, um, then you don't need to worry about those tax consequences. So it's simple. My folks did an amazing job of helping with college. They use something called an UPMA account. That's jargon, but it wasn't a 529 plan. So those are, they're just more recent and they're a great planning tool. So, all right, we're going to talk about some more very valuable planning concepts when it comes to college planning, but then also point out some mistakes that you need to avoid that. And we will get to listener questions coming up here on Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group. So, I mean, the rest of the story is, the people that started in 2007 put in five grand, put in five grand in 2008. Thought and, you were stupid in 2009. And said, okay, what should we do with this? Yeah. This this 10,000 that I invested that you grew to six. Yeah. And you obviously don't know what you're talking about. This was a bad idea. These are bad accounts. Right. This is, and and what people thought was this is, this is a bad plan. Uh, it wasn't a bad plan. It was a bad plan stock market yeah so the people that that added five thousand when their account was worth six thousand are the happiest people oh, you ever met yeah. today yeah the people that didn't still aren't terribly disappointed because that it surpassed right. where it was but, but they still have that taste in their mouth of, oh this was a bad idea mm -hmm. when no that's not necessarily true so mm -hmm. all right start okay. segment three Star segment three. So what are we up to hit in the segment? I, I think, I mean, we, we already sort of said it, but the most valuable planning concept, I, mean, I think there could be at least one more, just the idea of we'd encourage you to start early. Even if you're not crystal clear, start with $50 a month. Start with 25 mm -hmm. bucks a month. Start by, you know, for Easton's birthday and for all the kids' birthdays, my dad just rounds up and we put a chunk into the 529 plan. So, hey, here's for the gift, and then this is for college. So just start doing something. Start early. So I think it's worth stating that, and then we can get into potential mistakes. All right. Thank you so much for joining us today. This is Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group. My name is Mike Bernard. Here with me, as always, in the KFG studios, Kevin Corhorn and Josh Gregory. Thank you very much to Bethel College, soon to be Bethel University, Adult and Graduate Studies, as well as Diane Bennett and her Inspired Homes team for partnering with us on the Wise Money Show. Thank you very much. I want to point out, if you have a question, you can send it to us a few different ways. Even if you just need help, you need, reach, you need to reach out to a CFP. We're here to help, okay? 574-222-2000. Uh, That's 574-222-2000. You can call or text. Uh, you can find us online, wisemoneyradio.com, or all over social media. Every episode's on the YouTube channel, so that gets refreshed often. You can submit questions right there. Facebook, Twitter, just search Wise Money Radio. We're still in our series talking about the most valuable planning concepts out there in each of the six areas of your financial life. We've 
added another one to retirement planning. That's college planning. We're tackling that today. There's one more, at least, principal, very valuable financial planning concept that we need to introduce. It's something you're already familiar with, I'm assuming. But what what would you say it is, Kevin? Well, I I actually am going to pass the mic to Josh oh. because I was uh, I'm going to pass it back to Mike because okay. my mind was wandering. Uh, okay. I'm joking. It, it, this is uh, th- this is uh, it, it, you've heard us talk about this before. Just get started early with it, it with planning for college, even if. That very first step of figuring out, well, who's responsible for what, even if that's not crystal clear, because I, college is going to look different. We, I remember 10 years ago, we thought, well, the internet and online classes is going to change college, and it didn't, actually. You, It's much more accessible. You can, but the price isn't different that much, and, and so I here I thought, well, that's going to that's going to change everything. Yeah, the, pr- it, the pricing's not going to change until the government money gets out of prob- education. Yeah, probably. And so um, it, all of that, though, you could use as obstacles to starting to plan. And I, I think you'd be disappointed if that's the route you took. I mean, one of the things we were talking about at the break was just the power of even getting started with a small dollar amount. Kevin, you were sharing the story about $50 a month over an 18 year period of time, what it can grow to. And the fact that it was a grandparent that was helping out just made it this amazing blessing, this amazing surprise. I'm often surprised by uh, even some innovative ways to try to squirrel away dollars for, for college. For example, there are some credit cards out there that instead of getting rewards points, you can get rewards dollars that can be dumped into an actual 529 plan account. Yeah. We have a Fidelity account that's doing that uh, right now for our kids, and it's fun to see. I mean, we're just we're just spending money as we normally would. It's just that the benefits are accruing to an account without me thinking about it. And that's a 2% cash back deal. So yeah. if you compare, and I've had that conversation with my wife, and she's like, well, what if we had points so we could go stay at a Marriott? And I said, that will be the most expensive Marriott you ever stay at. If you consider what the value of the points is versus what the value of 2% of your expenditures would be going into a Fidelity account. For sure, yeah. for sure. And I even, I, I also shared at the break, I'm blessed to have uh, great folks who, um, even for my kids, as they give gifts, which they have enough toys, my goodness. <laughs> um, they they make a college contribution along with that. And so I... I'd consider those innovative, those those outside the box uh, ideas, but get started early. Start funding that thing, even if it's just a little bit. Just get started. You know why it's so important to get started early too, though. It it gets you focused on the future that these kids are going to grow up, and it's easy to lose sight of that. I mean, I I look back and realize, man, I've been a parent for eleven years now, and there's not that many years left before my son, my oldest, needs to be ready to go face the world on his own. And college is one of the ways that we plan to help get him ready for the world. Mm -hmm. But it's not the only way. There are some skills that he needs to be learning in our home so that he can build upon it in college. College will hopefully give him marketable skills that he can take out into into the world and earn a living and make a meaningful contribution. But I was just thinking, uh, part of the reason my mind was wandering, I, I realized, you know, today, as uh, as we're talking, this is the last, so, so congratulations to Bethel College. This is the last commencement under the name Bethel College. There's a whole new crop of students coming out literally today, and uh, moving forward, they will be Bethel University. But I was thinking about those students. Some of those were my students. And I, I love them to death. They're awesome. They're they're approaching the world. But Bethel got to put some of the finishing touches on these students. But you, as a parent, even if you're you're parenting a four year old right now, the work that you have ahead of you, yeah, college is part of getting them ready, but it's not the only thing. And uh, getting started on the college savings just gets you in the right uh, frame of mind that I'm raising a future adult here. And yeah. uh, I, yeah. I, I don't know. I, and I think to me the the best, and this is I'm going to sound like a broken record. I'll explain to you guys what a record is later. But um, <laughs> what, the the best advice is to have a plan. 
and n- not having a plan is a plan. True. I, it's 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 just not the plan that you want to have. Yep. And as I think about this, and um, I like analogies. If you if you're, there's something wrong with your car, if the check engine light is on, there, you're going to do likely w- one of three things. One is you're just going to ignore it and drive it until your car blows up. Or you're going to drive to the auto parts store, have them do the check engine thing, and they'll tell you, look, your Fitzer valve is uh, <laughs> uh, messed up and you need to get your muffler belt changed and your carburetor bearings adjusted and whatever else you have. And so you're going you're gonna to go do it yourself and spend this Saturday um, buying parts that you don't need and taking it back to the auto parts store, et cetera, et cetera. Or you're going to take it to someone that fixes cars all day, every day. So you're going to drive it into Gates of Granger. They're going to say this is what it costs. They're going to fix it, and you're off to the races. So there's really three things that you do with your car. There's three things that you do with your education plan, too. I don't have a plan. That's my plan. I'm going to do it myself, and you can you can do it yourself. It's quite possible if you don't do it for a living, you might not know what all of the opportunities are and whether you should be using it a 529 to fund it, whether you should be planning to use a Roth IRA to fund all these different possibilities. Or you can go and sit down with a pro who does it for a living, who hopefully, because of their experience helping many other folks, they've seen your situation. Your situation is not new. It's it's not going to throw them for a loop. They're not going to have to go and study their textbooks and say, how do we help? No, they know exactly what to do. Yeah. I I love that you're kind of pointing this back, though, to financial planning as a whole, because the Wise Money Show is about reminding you the the decisions you make in one area of your life have to take into consideration the other areas. The way you save for college is going to have tax implications. The amount that you can save for college has cash flow implications. You obviously have to make some investment decisions along the way. What's an appropriate investment vehicle to grow these assets eventually? So, you know, even just one little simple question of how how do I save? How do I get ready for my kids to go to school? You have to really... Uh, have a game plan that touches so many areas of your financial life, at least three or four that I just rattled off. Yeah. I, I, if we, if we start helping you avoid some mistakes, you, you mentioned the investment one and I, that's the one that stands out to me as probably the easiest one for someone to make a mistake in. I actually saw one early in my career where, um, some great folks, some of the nicest people you'd, you'd ever meet. Um, saved up for college with a hot stock and it did great until the company went bankrupt and you know a lot of people have those sorts of stories oh i lost it all or or have that curiosity will i lose it all well with an individual stock it's a concentrated position you can make a lot of money which they did and then about two years before the oldest went to college the stock started plummeting and it went bankrupt and all of that college money was gone and so that's one of the reasons why we believe in mutual funds, but also making sure that the risk level in your investments line up with the time horizon. And so I, this is one area, I'm not giving advice here, but within your 529 plan, this is one area that I actually like these target date, target enrollment funds, because they automatically adapt for you, especially with some of the rules, the limitations the IRS has about trading and so on. So be careful with your investment uh, with your investment management there. So we've got a couple other mistakes that we need to point out to help you avoid as well as listener questions coming up here on Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group. Landing the plane. Landing the plane. Are we really? One at a time. <laughs> yeah. Nice quick. All right. Lindsay, tell us when you're ready. Because we're gonna we're gonna kill it. So we are gonna get to listener questions. Oh, uh, we're gonna get to Rick. We gotta we gotta deal with Rick. I have I have my you don't need this. I have my mistake and okay. it's 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 easy <laughs> or short <clears throat> brief. Thank you so much for joining us today. This is Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group. My name is Mike Bernard coming to you from the KFG Studios. Kevin Corhorn, Josh Gregory joining me as always. If you've missed anything, several ways for you to catch up on this episode and really any others in the entire library. Everything's on the YouTube channel. That's my favorite. You guys know that. So just search Wise Money Radio on YouTube. That's a full channel. Subscribe to it. 
share it. We're talking about college planning. We're going to talk about college planning more in a few weeks because it's that season right now. People are graduating and you're starting to think about, all right, well, what's it going to take for college or what is that next step? So you can catch every episode on the YouTube channel on podcast as well. Search Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group wherever you listen to podcasts. Subscribe to that. Share it as well. And then lastly, there's a media player on the website, wisemoneyradio.com. You can listen to previous episodes. You can submit a question right there as well. All right, before we transition into Rick's question, mistakes to help you avoid um, when you're setting out on this path to achieve a big college planning goal. Kevin, what's, what's the biggest mistake that you've seen? The biggest mistake that I've seen is not having a plan. And so let me explain that just a little bit. It is very possible with education planning, you you can not prepare to fund your children's education, decide at the last minute you're going to fund their education, and rob Peter to oh. pay Paul. Oh. But you can't do that, most likely, when it comes to retirement planning. Because I've seen this a lot too. If we can be more specific, you weren't saving up for college because maybe you didn't want to or you didn't think you'd be paying for it or you didn't have the means, but you were probably saving up for retirement to get a match or something. And then all of a sudden college hits and you pull a bunch of money out of your retirement to pay for college. Not yeah. realizing the impact. Yeah, I, I've actually seen that several times. And I, I have seen at the last minute mom and dad who were not going to contribute anything to the kids' education started writing checks. And so the plan changed. Now, it's not a bad thing for the plan to change, but you need to understand how does that impact the rest of my financial life? And by, by writing a check today, what sacrifice is that necessitating in the future? Yeah. And so, again, the, the planning process helps you understand that. If I do this today, if I say yes to this today, what am I saying no to in the future? And it feels like with education planning, you have an infinite time horizon. And it feels like with retirement planning, especially as you get closer, it feels like you have a finite time horizon. Mm -hmm. And I would encourage you if you could if you could work on your thinking, your mindset, think of both of them with a finite mindset. Yeah, that's a great illustration of the need for financial planning, where you can have all of those goals working together and seeing how all of them impact each other. Josh, what were you going to say real quick? Well, I, I was just going to say, I mean, I agree with everything that Kevin said. One of the mistakes that I often see that's um, maybe a little bit more of the minutia, but uh, making the wrong choice on school or major is a, a frequent mistake. And it, it can be an emotional decision to pick a certain school or to pick a certain major, not really knowing wh when you're 18 years old, do you know what you want to do with the rest of your life? That's hard for a lot of students. Um, but you have to think of the college experience as an investment in your future, an investment in skills that are going to support you someday, and also an investment in your learning habits. That's what I think of. When I think back on my college years, it was learning how to learn. Yep. Because the rest of your life, you have to be keep continuing to sharpen the saw. And so uh, that's what I hope for my own kids, that when they leave college someday, wherever they go to school, that they will go uh, really just getting started on learning what they need for their working careers or their business careers or whatever, um, not believing that it was just a, a one and done kind of a scenario. I could not agree more and would say the exact same thing about my college experience. So, all right, Rick sent in this question. Thanks for your patience, Rick. Rick is a, a, is a friend. And uh, so thanks for your patience. So here's what he said. Is there an optimal percentage you should have between your traditional IRA and your Roth IRA assets. We have about 33% Roth, 67% traditional, and are working on converting the IRA to Roth over the next few years before the tax laws change. So is there an optimal percentage? Now, this goes back a few weeks, and um, I actually said, and you guys laughed, do you remember? Uh, I said, yeah, one way to manage against RMD is just have everything in Roth. And you chuckled. Way to go. Hurt my feelings. I'm still remembering <laughs> that. But, uh, was, but, but who does that? I don't know. What, We're jerks. But what is, so what would the optimal be? I, I, as long as 
it's done in the context of making sure you're paying the least amount of tax over your lifetime, I'd say 100 zero. 100% raw. Yeah. Well, but I as, would, as it, long as you've done it in a way where you're paying the least amount of tax over your lifetime. A lot of people contribute to a Roth and they probably shouldn't. Right? Yeah. And, and so another way to say paying the least amount of taxes over your lifetime would be to say pay the most taxes that you can in the lowest possible bracket. Right. Because the idea is I've got a dollar on this side of the fence that I've never paid taxes on. I got to get it over the fence. And when it lands on the other side, what's the value? Is it a dollar? Is it 70 cents? Is it 50 cents? And how do, how do I structure tax diversification in my various investments so that I have great options? That is, I, I could not have said that better. Options and tax diversification are the two terms that you want to burn into your brain right now because you don't know really how the tax laws are going to change in the future. Right. It, it, go back two or three years and there wasn't a concept like a qualified charitable distribution. Have you heard of that one before? This is when you reach age 70 and a half and you're allowed, well, you're forced to take distributions out of a traditional IRA. The, the government hasn't been taxing that money and they want to. Well, we didn't know that here in 2019, you would have the option of sending money from your IRA straight to a charity. Maybe you've been helping to support a charity, you know, your, your church or a mission of some sort for, for years. Well, now you can do it completely tax-free. If you're doing that with Roth money, you already paid the tax unnecessarily and you're using after-tax money to support the, the charity. You may not actually be getting the, the same kind of uh, tax benefits as if you could give uh, taxable money out of your IRA. So Rick, the answer to your question is, it's gotta be the right percentages for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because when you think about what Josh just said, I work with a number of business owners and they say, hey, listen, why would I, I I'm fine. Um, I've got these resources or these assets or what have you. I don't even want to mess around with the retirement plan at work. And I encourage them, no, mess around with the retirement plan at work. Put as much in that thing as you can, because someday once you hit 70 and a half, that's the money that you'll be using for your charitable contributions. And Rick, if you, this is, this is why the answer depends, because if your situation is that 33% of your investments in the Roth IRA fund your retirement plan, 67% you're going to give to someone. When you die, give that money to a charity and no one ever paid taxes on that. But it could be that you need 100% of what you've saved for retirement. If that's the case, your proportions, your percentages might look a little different. Yeah, yeah I, I love... I love that Rick has two different wells that he can go to to draw money out of, and he gets to change the proportion that he draws out of each one, and in doing so, he, he's giving himself some amazing options and planning opportunities for, for the rest of his retirement. Good, good job, Rick. Like I said, 100% Roth. <laughs> for your specific situation. All right, we're going to tuck another one in here, Ben 73. It, it applies. Ben 73 from Edwardsburg. My RMD each year is more than I really need to live on. Is there a way to reinvest this money, or do I just need to put it in cash in the bank? RMD stands for Required Minimum Distribution. That's the money you have to take out of your qualified retirement plans. Ben, you can move it from your IRA to your non-IRA investment account. And reinvest it there. And reinvest it there. That's or right. you can withhold 100% of it and let that pay your tax bill and don't do estimates. That's right. That's right. Good question, Ben. Thanks for your patience, Rick. All right. That is all the time we have for today. On behalf of Kevin Corhorn, Josh Gregory, myself, and all of us at Corhorn Financial Group, have a great weekend. We'll see you next Saturday for Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group. Securities offered through Silver Oak Securities, member FINRA slash SIPC. Advisory services offered through KFG Wealth Management, LLC. Doing business as Corhorn Financial Group. KFG Wealth Management, LLC and Silver Oak Securities Incorporated companies are unaffiliated.